Hi class, this is Miss Durley. This is part two of unit B, water and pH. So part one was water. Hopefully you've watched that. pH is just the small little, little, little bitty bit at the end of the unit. So let's get started. So uh, living systems live in a very small, narrow channel of variables, meaning that things like temperature, glucose levels, uh, salt levels, pH levels are going to make a big difference to a living system. So we human beings are living systems and we are very sensitive to even very small shifts in pH. And pH is going to give us an indication of whether something is acidic or whether it is basic. And this is why car batteries are very, very dangerous, right? They're very corrosive. We can see it um, when we open up, pop open the hood uh, and battery acid in the car is not something we want to get near our eyes or even our skin. So some key ideas for this screencast uh, are that water is smack dab in the middle with a pH of 7. It is completely neutral and this is due to the fact that the amount of H and OH in water is equal because water is H2O. So the amount of hydrogen ions will always be balanced with the amount of hydroxide ions. So water is a neutral uh, substance and if you watch TV commercials for bar beauty soap they try to tell you the pH is such and such and they're trying to tell you that this is going to be helpful to the cleansing process and obviously you wouldn't want a very basic or a very acidic soap you'd want something probably quite neutral on your skin. Um, pH is going to be a scale and it's going to be a indicator of how much hydrogen ion is free or available or is in any given system. Uh, so let's start with some vocabulary words. Uh, pH, and again we're in the chemistry zone here, so people that are not strong chemistry students lacking it in your background, you're going to have to work a little harder. So pH, hydrogen ion, and we could also write it as a H with a plus, hydroxide ion, we should know that name, acid, what is an acid, what makes an acid up, what is a base, a buffer, and then what is the pH scale. And that's where we're going to start. So let's look at this scale. The scale goes from 0 on the acidic end all the way up to 14 on the very basic end. As we said, smack dab in the middle is a neutral pH and water is the only thing that we would know of or that we know of that is neutral because it's balanced between the hydrogen and the hydroxide. So as we go closer to zero, the amount of hydrogen ion present is increasing. So the lower the pH, the more the H. And this is counterintuitive to us. And so this is where people, if they're going to make careless mistakes, often make them here. So you want to be extra cautious that when you are working with pH, you remind yourself the lower the pH, the more the H. And conversely, as we go towards 14 then, there'd be less H and increasing amounts of hydroxide, of OH. Whoops, negative, not positive. So uh, pH again, honest to goodness, it is one of the trickiest trick little things and it gets people all the time. So chanting, saying, writing it down, more H equals less pH. More H, so the more hydrogen ions are free in, in, a, in a system, the lower the pH level, the more acidic it becomes. Um, pH in the body, we should be familiar with our mouth runs around 7, a pH of around 7. Uh, our stomach, hopefully we uh, have experienced, right? Our stomach is quite acidic with a pH of 2.5. Our small intestine is a basic environment uh, running around a pH of 8.5. And, 
and our blood is somewhere in between 7.38 to 7.4. And this is quite a narrow range. Moving anywhere too significant out of this range would be quite uh, damaging and quite dangerous. So because of that, uh, our bloodstream is equipped with buffers. And buffers are going to be chemicals that can resist changes to pH. So they are either going to pick up excess hydrogen ions to remove them, or they're going to release hydrogen ions uh, and balance, thus balancing the pH of our bloodstream. So they are going to be a tool to maintain homeostasis, a steady internal environment inside our body, and that is how we stay alive, homeostasis. There we go. So can you, from this short little podcast, and we're going to do a lab in class, recognize an acid, recognize a base. Can you explain what makes an acid an acid? What makes a base basic? And can you explain, or do you have an idea of how buffers work and why they are important to helping us maintain homeostasis? Hope that